thank God for a breeze that's blowing. And uh, we ask God to touch us today and strengthen us. Uh, we're going to have some uh, morning worship this morning. we got a couple of uh, uh, folks that want to do some specials and we'll worship them together. And uh, let's open up a prayer. Ask God to touch this uh, setting today, touch this congregation, touch us here in this place. And ask God to speak down from heaven down to us and give us what we need today to have that daily bread we need. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God, to come to the house today to glorify who you are. God, we thank you, God, for all that you've done for us on a day-to-day -day basis, God. We thank you, God, for keeping us. We thank you, God, for your keeping power daily, God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, oh God. We thank you for that today. As you bless this service, God bless all those that are on the sound of my voice and those watching my live stream. We ask you, God, to touch those here and there. And we ask you, God, to draw us ever closer to you in this last days and this last time. We glorify today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In your cars, 90.7 is the FM transmission station. 90.7 you can listen to in your car. Sister Linda. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you all here today to worship the Lord. Uh, we're going to open up this morning with one congregational hymn. We do have some wonderful special singing for you. So we're going to sing one, uh, one this morning for all of you guys, and then we're going to enjoy the special guests that we have. Uh, the first one, the song we're going to sing is Blessed Assurance. I think everybody probably knows that. We got something special this morning. Sammy Johnson is going to be playing and singing in the sanctuary. So y'all worship with him this morning. Brother Sammy. Thank you, thank you, brother. Bless you. God bless everybody. You know what times are we having in this day and time? I'm telling you. But you know what? The Lord's got it all in his hands, and everything's going to be just fine because we know who's in control here. And it sure ain't the government, but it's God. He's in control, and thank goodness he is in control. I'm going to do a little song that's called this um, Amazing Grace, but I got a little different style. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Beautiful singing this morning. You know, I think about I think about heaven. Now one day we're gonna take that flight. We know Jesus Christ. And many times, you know, we, we live upon the place that we want to go down. We're going up to heaven. But there's work to be done yet here, church. And I believe when, when we finish our work upon the face of this earth, that God will call us home and he'll say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful a few things now, I'll make you ruler of men. I'm believing church today, God, that we need to know, God, that God desires to work inside of his church, and he desires me and you to put forth our hand to the plow and begin to work 
so great during these last times and last days. I believe we're embarked upon that even now. I'll give you what God's given me to give you today. You got your Bible's book of Revelation, chapter 2. This is Christ dealing with the seven churches in Revelation. You find this is the midway point in the church of Thyatira. We welcome everybody today, our visitors, those that have come out and yet to be on the premises. We thank you for coming. Those that have come back, we welcome you. you. Need bathroom? Bathroom is through the door here. Door right here if you need to go. And uh, those doors are open. We welcome you, though. It's good to have you for the Mount Zion Fellowship today. Revelation chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading in verse 24. The word of God says, But to you I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you no other burden but that which you have already hold fast till I come. It says, He who overcomes and keeps my works to the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall come with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I have received in my Father, I will give him the morning star. It has to be like the Spirit says unto the churches. Back to 24, it says, which have not known the depths of Satan. By the title this morning, I will title this message, Rescued from the Deep. Rescued from the Deep. Pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God, that we have a revelation in Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, the Son of God has come to set men free. He's come to deliver. He's come, God, to rescue us from those, those, those woes of sin, God, and that depth of, of sin, God, he can bring a God. We're preaching the Latter-day people, knowing that, God, in due time, that Christ is coming to take this church home. But I'm praying while we're here, while we're here, God, let us work by this yet day, for the night cometh no man can work. And we glorify today for your word, God, that we can stand upon during troubled times. Strength us small we are, and we praise the Lord Jesus Christ above it all. Amen and amen. No, it's a little hot today. I know the cars are running. The 90.7 is that FM transmission station. And uh, we believe in God that touches here today. I'm having a meeting with the deacons after church. We're going to discuss opening back up the church. We're going to talk about that and let you know uh, next Sunday. But I'm going to meet after church and talk about that. And we'll be coming down the line and let you know our direction in that regard. Just be praying. You find here Jesus Christ in with the church of Thyatira in the book of Revelation. I'm going to tell you, I believe that in this church of Thyatira, you look at this and read this, I could go and, and try to go over the doctrine, the theology, and go into all of this. But there's one thing that Jesus Christ told this church of Thyatira, and that's what I want to deal with today, and that's the depths of Satan. Satan has many depths. He takes men down. He, he pulls them down to a pit of sin. And it's only Jesus Christ who can rescue those that have fallen so deep and fallen down so far. And I believe that in our last time that God is raising up churches here and there uh, that is going to preach the unadulterated word of God that's going to rescue those souls uh, that need to rescue in church. Uh, I know during that time of apostatizing churches uh, and many preaching a different doctrine, different message, uh, I know during this last time this one message is going to rescue the soul. And that's the message of the cross and that, that story of redemption. It's in the blood that we have that redemption, in the blood that we have salvation. And I find in the Word of God that you find that men are trapped in, in the depths of sin for so long. They think there's no hope for me any longer. I can't do anything at all. There is no, there's no, there's no, there's no salvation that can touch me. But I find that Jesus Christ is in the depths of sin that he reaches down so great. He reaches down so deeply. Huh? And he rescues the violent sinner, rescues that person huh? that seems to be in a prison by their own name. Finding the Word of God that talks about the depths of Satan. You see, in Revelation 20 and 2, it talks about Satan in four different ways. He's a dragon. That means that Satan has power, and he, he, he works on that power, and he takes men and captivates them, and then leads them down a road to destruction. We all know he has power in that regard. But I'm going to tell you the answer to the power there is Christ, and all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. That means there's power in Christ to reach down so deep and reach down so great to rescue those in need rescue. It says also that he's a serpent. That means he is deceived. He went in that garden and deceived Adam and Eve into believing they would become his gods they took of that fruit. He's a deceptive measure, and he's using that same deception even in the churches of our day. I, they think they're preaching the right gospel. It's a gospel that's all in left field and in the, in the wrong direction. He's very, very deceitful. But I find that in the deception of deceit, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
in the face of deceit, you have truth being prevailing in Jesus' body. It says he's an accuser. The devil constantly accuses us that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, you've done that. You've done this. You cannot be rescued. You cannot be pulled out of that hole that I've got you into. But I'm going to tell you, the cross is an anchor. The cross is the blood. And when he puts that blood upon our lives, he reaches down and rescues us. The devil accuses us. You remind him, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. When he comes accusing us, we've got to... It says last week he's an adversary. The devil is a, is a word adversary. He comes against the church. He comes against me and you as believers. Uh, and he also uh, comes against that sinful man uh, and drags him down further into a pit of mire uh, and a pit of sin. And it says in the middle of all that, Ephesians chapter 6, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you can be withstand the wiles of the devil. Uh, church, I know he comes against us. I know there's many. The devil comes against that church with But if you put on the full armor of God today, you've got a substance to fight in there. Everything the devil brings tries to bring us down in God has got an answer. And, this is, and the answer is in Jesus Christ and that Son of God. The depths of Satan. Many times you ain't going to the beach this week. If you do, you're going to be waiting in line trying to get there, from what I understand. A lot of folks are trucking down. Don't ask me about going down there. About yesterday, I said, ah, I'm all right. I ain't going to wait that. But if you go to that beach and I got them youngins out there playing in that water, playing in that sand, and I tell them, don't go too far. If you go too far, that undertow will take you on. That wave's going to knock you over. Well, that's all right, Daddy. I'm all right. I'm strong. You gave it to me. I'm strong. I can, I can go over as far as I want to go out there. I said, no, you can't. Many times, church, when we look at sin, sin is that, that luring attraction uh, that I've got the power. I can go a little bit out there. I'm going to be all right. Uh, the, the, the devil ain't going to overtake me. I can just sit a little bit, uh, and everything's going to be fine. Uh, but Paul said in Romans chapter 6, uh, that sin shall not have dominion over you. It is not God's desire for his church to walk in sin and the, and the people of, of, of the world. Uh, he wants them to come out of sin and be a separated people, uh, a holy people. I can go in that water just a little bit. I can sin a little bit and it'll be all right. Before you know it, I've gone so far uh, and it's almost up to my neck and that wave overtakes me uh, and it drags me out to the deep. Many lives have been lost by the undertow in that beach setting, but it's also true in the spiritual realm. The devil uh, has swept many a soul out to the waters of the deep uh, where there is no return. When you take your last breath here, uh, that hell awaits those that have not allowed the blood of Christ to rest you. I know this morning, this ain't popular preaching. I know this morning, you will not hear this in many times, but I still believe, church, there has to be a separation. I still believe that sin is a reproach to any people. The Word of God says a reproach there, and it says every nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. America as a whole, I believe, has turned its back on God. You can look at that in media. You can look at that in the school system and on down the line, they turn their back on the living God. But because they turn their back, this does not mean me and you have got to, we don't have an obligation to, to preach the gospel to rescue the souls that need rescue. Jesus Christ went to great lengths in the Word of God and the Gospels. He would go out of his way many times to rescue one soul. I was there praying this morning, I said, God, I want you to use me today for even one soul I touch on these grounds. Then my God rescue them and reach out and pick them up. Jesus Christ went. He said, like he told the disciples, let's go to the boat, let's go to the other side. As they're in that boat going to the other side, the land of the Catarines, you find him on there, he's going forward, and you find the winds and waves begin to compass the disciples about, and Christ is on, is on the bottom of that boat sleeping. They roll and try to figure out what we're going to do now. I know Christ is sleeping, but the winds and waves are too much for us to, to, to carry the one with. I'm going to tell you, church, when you begin to put your mind to work for God, and begin to allow your hands to go and rescue souls that need a rescue, and you can guarantee the devil's going to come against you. They woke him up and said, Master, do you care that we perish? He said, oh, ye of little faith. Now, he stretched forth his hands uh, and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it all ceased at that point in time. I believe when Jesus Christ is on board our boat, uh, when he's in our church operating and him going forward,
forward. It doesn't matter what comes against crisis. They rebuke those things that come against the truth. I believe we need to know as a, as a believing body uh, that when Christ speaks, uh, the devil has to listen. Uh, the world must listen. Uh, and the sinful man must turn that ear to him. Send so God to the other side. And the city miller met him a man that lived among the tombs. His name was Legion. And his name was Legion because he said, there are many. You see, they tried to bind that man hand and foot. Couldn't do it. He break those chains asunder. They tried to do all these types of things to contain him, but he could not be contained. He had reached death and Satan, and even man himself had no answer for him. You find him coming down the fall before the Son of God, uh, and he begins to worship, uh, and God stretches his hand upon his life uh, and delivers him. Uh, but you can find that when deliverance happens, uh, the devil don't like it, and he wants the church to pack up and go on. He says there, the new men come out, and that, that demons that went to the swine, they went to the water off the cliff, and they destroyed that, that swine there. But then men come out there and say, you've got to get out of our coast. Uh, we can't stand all that preaching now here. Uh, there's religious folk that can't stand the preaching of the gospel. Uh, they'd rather have their swine, uh, rather have the things of the world than having that Christ living among the church. Amen or hold me. He delivered one man. He delivered that one man on that boat, went to the other side, and then many said many received him after that. I'm here to tell you, church, uh, it doesn't matter if there's one soul that needs to be impacted for the kingdom of God. Uh, we're going to go out of our way to reach that soul uh, and to throw them, throw them a life out of the cross, uh, saying, I've got you here, got you now. That cross is the emblem of our salvation, the emblem of our, of our anchor. Talked about that. But picture this, listen to me here, church. If you take that cross and set it upright, it points up to heaven, letting you know that's the way to get to heaven. It points down to hell, letting you know if you reject that cross, then hell's awaiting you. And it's got a left and a right hand saying it beckons all to come to the saving knowledge of Christ. No limitation on this gospel. It goes all across the world, and all those that have come to that, that knowledge of him can be saved and rescued. You lay the cross down on the ground, it points to the north, it points to the south, it points to the east, and it points to the west. That means all, all people of all nations and all tongues can come around that redemption plan uh, and be rescued by him. You find Christ, you rescue that man. And you find in John chapter 8, Jesus is teaching in the temple. He's instructing the people there. And you find the Pharisees dragging in a woman that had been committed adultery and caught in the very eye. They threw her down the midst of them and said, Now the law of Moses says that you've got to stone her. We're supposed to stone her. It says that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it says he reached down, he stooped down, and was riding there in the sand. He began to ride. Then listen to what the Pharisaical folks were saying. He's rope there in the sand. And they said, What say you? He lifted up. He said, He that was without sin cast the first stone. He goes down and begins to write again. Begins to write that. You see, the scripture does not tell us what he was writing. But I can tell you my imagination when I believe he was writing. He was rewriting her story. He was telling her there's redemption. I've rescued you. And I'm done telling the church today. If you fall into the seat of sin, allow Christ to stoop down and write your story again. Thank God he don't throw the clay away. Many times I've messed up and I've come short of the glory of God. Many times I had to lay down an old-fashioned order saying, God, I, I need you to once again work in my life and write a new story inside of me. You begin to write. He looked up. Everybody in their own conviction had walked away. He said, woman, where's your accusers? Is there no man that condemns you? She said, sir, no man. He said, ma'am. He said, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. Christ has not come to condemn, but he comes to save. He comes to throw a lifeline down the depths of Satan, the region full folk out of that sin. Thank God for redemption today. Thank God for a lifeline that he throws to me, he throws to you, and he's thrown out to a lost and dying world to rescue us. Brother story. But you notice he says, go and sin no more. He didn't say go sin a little bit, just a little bit. He didn't say
say just go, you can dab a little bit here and there. Ocean water and just step there a little while. He said, no, go and sin no more. You see, sin don't have dominion over a two child of God. We mess up, yes, we come up short of the glory of God. I understand that. And we mess up and make mistakes. But when I make a mistake, I make it right with Christ. I come to that and I go out and don't try to do it again. A rescue store there for her. He'll write a rescue store for me and you if we'll open up our book and allow him to do so. The depths of Satan. And it goes on to say in 25, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. Church, we've got a doctrine of the cross, a doctrine of the blood. We've got the full arm of God and the things of God. If you'll do this, I'll give you that. I said, devil, I ain't for sale.
can accompany all types and all kinds. It's not going to break when the Spirit of God impacts it. And the Spirit of God is there to keep it from breaking. I'm telling the church today, if you cast your net down to the depths of sin and begin to draw folks out, the net's not going to break. Why? Because Christ is empowering. in an exact number, 153. You see, what's the significance of that, putting that in the Word of God? Why are they numbered those men? At the very beginning of Christ's ministry, there was a multitude that could not be numbered, but you find at the very end, it's a multitude that could be numbered. That tells me and you at the very beginning of Christ's ministry, uh, it's a word that he was putting forth across the whole world. Uh, but in these latter times, he's telling me and you, uh, there's still more fish to get. Uh, there's still more people uh, that need to be rescued. Uh, and God wants me and you to reach them. That's what they brought me. Uh, i got a friend back here who loves to fish. How many love to fish? Close to buck corn or something. I guess a lot of us like the best. I don't mind if I'm some catching something. I ain't catching nothing. It's a hot day. I want to go on my home. I find in the gospel message that there's souls in and are in such a place of darkness that they can't see the light in front of them. There's people that have been so far down. The rest of the world is stealing upon them. The devil put them in a box and in a prison he's trying to keep them from the knowledge of Christ. But the Holy Ghost can know no boundaries. The Spirit of God knows no limitations. You say, I can't reach down. It's too far out there. The pressure's too great. The prayer life is too travailing to even get there to reach them. What am I going to do? The Spirit of God knows how to mold and mend your net to allow you to reach down to the very depths of sin. In the depths of sin, it gives redemption and salvation to all those that desire. There is no exclusion in the Jesus Christ. There's every soul is precious in his sight, and we're gonna preach and win all. That great commission said, Go ye to all the world uh, to preach the gospel to every living creature. Uh, don't exclude not one of them. And that's our endeavor here. But you see, Christ told him to cast on the right side of the boat. Spiritually speaking, we got to cast on the right side uh, at Christ's commission, at Christ's told, and in that you find the multitude. of Christ working until the end. After he told, you can't see the light, but when you come up to the surface, you have Jesus Christ beaming down so greatly, so richly. He illuminates our life, and we walk in the light and not walk in darkness no more. God ever desires to put a light inside of his church that the devil can't stop, that the world can't stop, and that religious folk cannot stop. I'm praying that God in our place, in our place of worship. Many times over, God, give us a light that stretches across the world. Give us a light that touches those that are lost in the darkness. God, give us a light that shines out and goes down deep and rescues the souls of their rescue. That's his works, work until the end. To him I will give power over the nations and rule them with a rod of iron. For the vessel of power shall be broken to shit and shy shivers even as I have received of my Father. It says, I will give him the morning star. That morning star is the first thing you see in the morning time when it shines so great and shines so brightly. And Christ is promising that in the prophetic, uh, the prophetic uh, image, if you will, uh, to those that will follow him, you'll have that morning star uh, when it gets to that everlasting king. But I believe even now, church, that we've got a morning star when, God, when Christ puts his presence uh, inside the church uh, and his glory shines so brightly. Uh, it shines all the way down uh, to Wilson County, Johnston County. Uh, it even goes to Wayne County. Uh, I believe it'll shine all over this nation uh, if we allow God to be God uh, and allow him to shine. It's a morning star that all people see, uh, that all nations see, uh, because it's a recognition that we've been with Christ. We'll allow him to empower our lives.
to tell me this morning? You said, man, I understand what you're preaching. I understand what you're saying. Is that rescue? I know he's the one that can liberate my soul. But I'm not ready to, to give him to give him the range. I'm not ready to let loose. Can I tell you, you're not living until you allow Christ to take your life completely. When you relinquish control, when you say, I've got no power to hold it longer, but Christ, I give the broken piece of my life to you. That's when Christ can mold and make it to what you have you be. You don't realize it, but when you're in control, you're in a depth, you're in a depth of a, a place of death, a place that, that you cannot find a way up and a way out. Why? Because everything around you seems to crumble. When Christ delights himself in resurrection, he delights himself in taking broken pieces and putting them back together to make something great out of that. Your Bible says, my Bible says in Romans chapter 8, 38 and 39, this is Paul saying, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. It says, nor height, nor death. Nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, which is in God. I will tell the church, there is no depth that Christ will not reach to. There's no net that they will break when Christ surrounds that net and begins to bring it up. There's no depth that it knows if you allow yourself to come to the surface as Christ is bringing you there in holy repentance. You'll find your life begin to have meaning. Your life will have a light. Your life will have a, have a purpose. And that purpose is to serve Jesus Christ above all. Why? to allow him to do that. One day, church, when we go to that everlasting throne, we go to that eternal kingdom, it says, I'm going to let you rule and reign with me. That's us, me and you, sitting at the right hand, at Jesus Christ at the right hand, and in that church sitting right there is that bride. He's going to call us up, and it says, we'll ever rule and reign with Christ. It's not a place of position. It's a place of humility. We bring that humility here, and God gives us position in Christ. It's that position in him that I want to be here. A position with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ that has rescued me and rescued you from that day and has called us out of, out of darkness into his marvelous love. That's the morning star. It says, he, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Both church, and I'm believing that Christ is telling me and you, he's telling the church as a whole, I'm coming quickly and I want the church to hear what I've got to say. I want the church to be ready in my works and not your own works. I want my church to grow uh, in the glorification that I desire in Christ. Uh, and I believe in church uh, that we can be a beacon of light shining out in the lost and dying world uh, to stretch those nets so deeply and so greatly. Uh, I believe that's what the Spirit of God is saying to the church of our day. Time is short. Time is at hand. And we need to be in that church that God is destined here and now to bring in that soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God, this morning. We thank you for this gospel message, God, that rains out, God, and rains so great. We thank you, God, that we have redemption through the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. God, there's people in the sound of my voice, even here and now, they find themselves in a deep, dark place. I'm praying, God, that you rescue them. God, begin to stretch forth that hand of deliverance, uh, that hand of salvation, uh, and draw them up to the surface, uh, that they can see your marvelous light, God, and be rescued by you. Today, God, is a day of rescue. Today is a day of restoration. Today is you reaching down, God, to deliver those that need deliverance. And I'm praying, God, for the church as a whole, uh, as we gather together, God, as one body and one mind, uh, under the Lordship and the leadership of Christ, uh, to begin to work the works of God, uh, begin to take that net uh, and cast it forward, uh, and begin to see the multitudes of fish that you desire to save. As we stretch forth our hands to you, say, God, I'm nothing. I'm asking you to be everything in my life. I pray today for those that need Those that need stability, God, we have all that in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying even here now that we experience that glorious power and that glorious salvation. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We're going to talk and discuss. Let you know next Sunday potentially back in the house of God. We're gonna talk about that. We'll let you know. Have your uh, have your telephones tuned in. We'll do the one call. And also we're we'll reporting that on so follow us on that. Once again, thank our visitors for coming. Thanks home folks for coming. And uh, Wednesday night live stream at seven o'clock.
at 6 o'clock, those involved in Bibles will need to meet here at the church. We're going to go over those, uh, those uh, curriculum and things at that point in time. 6 o'clock, those in Bible school, Sunday, uh, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We'll let you know about next Sunday. Everybody have a good Sunday. God bless you.